Good morning, folks. This is uh, the first lecture of week nine. And on the agenda today, I'm planning to do, if possible, these three chapters. We'll see whether we can actually, we we'll actually have the time to do chapter eight or not. If not, then obviously it's going to be done next. Now, in doing this, uh, we're going to be using cylindrical join. I mean, cylindrical join is basically uh, a two degree of freedom system that, uh, for example, these can translate and rotate. This block can translate and rotate about that line. Then I do point curve joint. Uh, you have already seen point curve curve joint uh, in the case of a sliding ladder. And then this chapter eight, whether we have time to do it or not, will be involving a surface a point surface joint. So let's look at the very first problem that, we, that I'm going to be doing. It's called an ellipse ellipse generating mechanism. So it consists of uh, four uh, four parts. There's going to be a base here like that, and two blocks which are inside of those grooves, and then there's this link on the top, and uh, th these blocks travel up and down those grooves. And as it does, then this thing will traverse a, an ellipse. It just makes an ellipse. So uh, basically, as uh, this thing uh, the travel uh, takes place, is uh, this endpoint will go around an ellipse. So in the event that uh, the point A is uh, halfway between B and C, actually that ellipse degenerates into a, uh, a circle. So that's the first problem that I'm going to do. I'm not going to worry about any dimensions, okay? So let me go ahead here and immediately save this thing. So file, save management, save as, desktop, New folder, ellipse generator, generator. Okay, and uh, I'm going to put the stuff in there. Let me start with the base, knowing all dimensions. So insert a new part in there, and I'm going to call this thing the base. Base and base. Okay, let's make it. It's a very simple uh, square which is padded. So on that horizontal plane, I will sketch. It doesn't have to be a square, it can be a rectangle actually, but it doesn't matter really. So I'll make it, uh, I'll make it a rectangle. How about that? Fine. Okay, exit. Uh, pad it. That's fine. Now on that side, I will sketch a little rectangle. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is make sure that I know what the size of this uh, height is. So let me uh, let me make the distance. What I mean by that is uh, I want to know what this size is from uh, here to there. Okay, I'll make it point, uh, point 0.5. Maybe just to make sure it's it. Let me see for a second. Yeah, that's good. So basically, I have a situation like this. Okay. All, I know that this is 0. 0.5. Okay, let me actually make this thing a little bit smaller. So exit. And I make a pocket all the way to the end. To the last. Now I have to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So why don't I why don't I use actually a circular pattern? If you look, and for the circular pattern, I'm going to be using, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, instances and angular spacing. Angular spacing, I make it. Uh, uh, well, let's see now. For reference element, I can I select the z-axis. Z-axis, yes. And I don't want to use the entire solid. I just want to use that crown and for the angle I want to make it 90 degrees let's see how it looks like 
Yep. Uh, except that this is fine. Except that uh, because this uh, pad, uh, because of the sketch that I had, uh, this sketch. Uh, probably what I can do is I uh, make this thing shorter. Exit. Okay, at the end of the day, you have to make something like that. Please do it any way you feel comfortable with. Okay, so we go all the way to the top. I save everything. All right, now let's insert those blocks. So insert, insert, a new part. I'll say block one. These are identical blocks, but I'd rather do it separately. Uh, block one and block one. Same thing down here. Block one. Okay. Let's make it. Double click. And uh, <clears throat> why don't I go and uh, on that face, on that face, I will sketch. Okay, where is it? Let me flip the side face so that I can see actually what I'm doing. Um, I draw a rectangle. Like that. It doesn't matter whether it's touching these, uh, both of these edges, both of these sides or not. That's totally irrelevant. So I'm going to make it something like that. It just, it just looks good if it's actually smaller than that. So I will draw a little circle here. Exit. Pad it. Uh, I will make it uh, 1 because remember, 0.5 was... Uh, this much was 0.5, I made it a little bit taller. Now, I can make exactly the same thing. Let's save everything. Repeat that basically, or I can do a copy paste or uh, other, any other means. Right click, copy, and right here, paste. Now they're gonna be on top of each other, so, uh, to see that you can actually translate it for example translating in y direction you can see they're going to be on top of each other good let's go all the way to the top insert insert a new part that's going to be my rod that link on the top right click properties or make it rod and rod Okay, good. So, uh, <clears throat> actually, the easiest way to do that is go to rod, if you want to make it, on that face, you sketch, project that circle. Okay, you can see that. And then uh, make the rest of it. Let me flip this, yeah, flip this thing around. Yeah, so you can see it better. So, uh, who, who should I make it as? Uh, yeah, I'll make it as a rectangle or anything else that you like. Yeah, something like that. This is a short, long enough rod. I want it to be a little bit longer. Yeah, why not? And I want this circle to be over here too. So uh, uh, the, the different ways of doing it, but uh, one way is to uh, <clears throat> one way is to measure that circle. Let's see what the radius of it is. Radius 0.136. Okay, so I go here and draw another circle here, 0.136. Point one three six. Okay, very good. Exit. Now, if I insist on making pins there, I better do a multi pad. Okay, so this is going to be the big one. 
So why don't I make that thing point uh, one? These are the holes. I'll make it point uh, point three. And this is the hole. It's supposed to turn into, of course, a a, a, a pin. So you can see that right right there. Okay. Good. That's a, we're pretty much done here. So one other thing I want to do, because later on I want to draw the trace of this point, I'm going to create a point exactly halfway between these two points, which belongs to the rod. So a point uh, between this point and that point, and exactly halfway, because later on I want to draw the trace of this. Okay, so we go all the way to the top, all the way to the top, save it. All right, let us anchor this uh, this block or this base. All right, so I'm going to put uh, this guy, this block in that uh, slot. So uh, coincidence between, uh, for example, this edge and that edge. Okay. Okay. Good. And I'm going to make a coincidence between, for example, this face and that face of the wall. Okay. Now, if I there's nothing to update because it's already there are already a coincidence there. So, uh, if I move this thing so that it ends up on that uh, on that base, you feel. I mean, I feel more comfortable. Okay. All right. Good. Now let's put this guy in that in that slot. So uh, coincidence between, for example, this edge and that edge. Okay. And coincidence between this face. Did I pick it? Sorry. Coincidence between this face and that face update there we are let me also move it in there so uh, try and transit in direction let me direction x like that okay now we're going to put these pins inside of those holes so coincidence between this pin and that hole and coincidence between that top face and the bottom face that will make a revolute joint. Okay. Update. All right. Good. And now that guy just coincidence between the axis and the axis because because of the sizes we don't have to do the the, the faces. It's already uh, uh, they already. They're already flush, so this and th that's going to become a cylindrical joint, by the way. An update, okay? Good, so let's check it out. Uh, first of all, save everything before we regret. Now we go then move and manipulate. Let's do a rotation with this box checked, so respect all the constraints. So let's just rotate about, for example, I don't know, this maybe this axis, this line this line okay so let's check yeah you see i guarantee you that that tip will actually traverse a an ellipse uh so i'm going to cancel that <coughs> good so let's uh, go ahead and create uh, all the joints so uh, uh we go to start uh, we can digital mockup the MU kinematics, get the magic wand out. Uh, new mechanism, mechanism number one, auto create is four joints, two prismatic, one revolute, and one cylindrical. Let's check it. Yeah, two prismatic, one revolute, and one cylindrical. And I can take one of these revolutes and go with zero to 360. 0 to 360, it doesn't matter which one, I can, can either, either do the, the revolute one or the cylindrical one. Let's check it out. Let's create a mechanism first. 
uh, the mechanism is created, right? Uh, cancel that. Uh, let's check it with the manual uh, command. You can see that. Okay, good. And make a cartoon. Animation. Another way of saying cartoon. Move this thing. Insert. Rewind anything but one and play it continuously. So you will see that it actually gives you something like that. The next thing I want to do is to show you actually that point. Uh, follows a trace uh, a, a trace that is a, an ellipse so i'm going to stop this rewind because we created our simulation well, that's a requirement if you're going to compile it and then get the trace so we go here compile it uh now we don't want we don't want speed of one speed of one will not give you anything and just say generate it Good, and then we put a trace. Uh, so that point, that point, and the reference reference product is actually product one. It's already picked. So we say okay. It's going to be a new point, new. Uh, it's going to be a new part. So save this thing, file, save management. Here's the trace, save as in that folder, trace one. Say okay. Incidentally, notice that uh, when you go here, file save management, uh, because I did a copy and paste, this is, uh, hang in there, so which one is it? Let me, let me just, yeah, because I made a copy and paste, there's only, one block that shows if i had actually made a block it would have been a block number two so just just be aware of that good so let me close this go here insert existing component in there and it's the trace we say okay there we are and this is an ellipse uh, i told you the condition that you need for it to be a circle in case you want it and if you play it if you do the replay you see that it actually goes on that ellipse that point travels on that ellipse i didn't put any physics into it because you already know how to do that we just give it a video so uh, that is done Get rid of it. Okay, we will now go and do this problem. And this is called a, I'll call it a robotic arm. Basically, it's made of uh, four pieces. There is this base right here. There's a base. There's a link one, link two, and link three. And uh, this, the bottom of link three actually traverses a curve in space which incidentally can be a separate part or i can make it as part of the space and that's how i'm going to do that okay so you want to see uh, the motion of this uh, robotic arm now notice that uh, if we can think about this thing as welding a piece this is a robot that's welding this uh, this boundary between two pieces for example usually the weld speed should be uh, relatively constant so uh, this point as if you want to put the physics into it, it would be constant velocity or speed along that path but you know where the acceleration is maximum acceleration will be maximum here and there and places where the curvature is, is high because remember the formula for uh, uh, normal acceleration is v squared a constant divided by the radius of the curvature so the acceleration is going to be relatively flat here very you know not not uh, 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 not very large but around these bends there's going to be a big acceleration okay uh, for a given velocity so uh yeah let's go ahead and do that we go here uh, let me start with the product file i'm going to save it right away so file save management save as one level up a new folder, robotic arm. Oh, 
Okay. Good. Let's do the base first. So uh, we're going to go to uh, insert. Let me go to assembly design. I feel more comfortable. I recognize the icons here. So insert a new part in there. I'll call it the base. Right click properties, base and base. Base and base. Okay, let's make it. You do it any way you want. It should look like what I showed you. Okay, so on that flat plate, I will sketch. I'm going to draw a rectangle, centered rectangle, actually. I like it better. So like that. Then I'm going to draw a little circle there. And another circle, you'll see why. This is how I'm going to do that because I'm going to use multi pad. You do it any way you want. Okay, so I'll do a multi pad. It says there are uh, three curves here. This is the rectangle, so let me pad it by uh, maybe 0.5. This is the, this is going to be the cur curve responsible for that portion. So let me make that thing uh, maybe two. We can change it if you don't like it. Maybe let me make it uh, four. Okay, and this is the little tip on the at the end. Okay, so let me make that thing. Actually, let me make this thing five. And let me make this thing uh, maybe uh, five point five. Let's see how it looks like. Ooh, uh, not. I don't think I put the right number in there. Let's go ahead. Double click on multipath. This last one. Uh, okay, so this is 5.5 is there. Let me make it 6. Oh, wait a minute. I'm picking the wrong one. Okay, this one, this one, I'll make it 5. This one, I make it 5.5. That's what I wanted to do there okay good now why i'm here in this uh, base i will actually make a slanted plane okay so i'll make a plane there are different ways of doing it i can say do it with angle and normal to a plane rotation axis is going to be this for example the reference Reference plane is going to be that. This is zero angle. So if I make the angle bigger, look, it's tilting. You can see that at the very bottom. You see that? Right there. It's tilting. You can see that? Right there. And we say, okay. So on that plane, I will sketch basically, uh, you know, some spline, or you can draw an ellipse, whichever you want, or a circle. It really doesn't matter. I'll make an ellipse. How about that? exit so uh, uh, the end of that vertical pin is going to traverse this except that uh, I want to make this thing uh, a little bit further back like that and I want to make it bigger too okay so you have to dimension it of course to, to make it bigger uh, let me make this thing six Okay, that's not really a critical matter, so you can you can change it when you see there is a need. You can specify the major and the minor of the ax uh, axis of the ellipse, and I don't want to waste any time on that right now. So uh, please make sure you you can go ahead and if you want you can go ahead and do it. So let's go all the all the way on the top. So we're gonna say insert a new part in there, and I'm gonna call it link one. Right click. Right click properties, link one, link one, link one. Let's make it. So, on a convenient plane, on that plane, we will sketch. Why don't I project that circle? There we are. I don't think I did it. There we are. And now I, may, I will make my link. 
So uh, why don't I make it with an elongated hole? And I'll fix it. There. Okay. And then I'll make another circle over here. Exit. Okay, pad it. It's too much. Point two. Yeah. Okay. That's good. All right. We go. We go there. We insert link two. So insert a new part. Link two. Link two. Double click on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I use a sketch. Why don't I project that circle? And make another elongated hole. Uh, okay, and a little hole circle here because that's going to be really where the vertical link is going to go exit okay so uh, we'll, do, we'll do a multi-pad on that sketch so this is the the big big periphery so make it 0.5 this is oops uh, 0.2 i think that's what i wanted 0.2 0.2 and this one is the little little circle here. I want a zero. I want a hole. And this is the guy on that side. So I'll make it. Uh, how about making it uh, uh, one? Hmm. Not one. <laughs> point. Uh, maybe point four. Okay. That that's bad. So hopefully this. Uh, thing can actually reach these ends it may or may not depending on what that length is so that's being the case i'm going to actually make this thing a little bit longer so let me go to this uh to this uh multi-pad double click let me see where is it yeah so let me uh move this thing Okay, exit. There we are. Okay, so that takes care of this. Uh, then we need the vertical piece. So all the way to the top, all the way to the top, insert new part in there. No. Right click properties, vertical, vertical component. I'll call it vertical. Vertical and vertical here. Double click. So uh, on that face, I will sketch, project that circle, exit. And pad it in both directions. Let's see, maybe a little bit more. I think they'll they'll take care of it. You can travel enough, enough. Yeah, fine, fine. Now while we are here, I create a point at the bottom of this uh, vertical uh, vertical member. So a point at the center of a circle. That circle creates a point there and I will also go here and create a point on that uh, curve so where was that curve double click on it it goes into uh, it was in the base right so uh, actually I don't have to go to the I have to go to that part am I in that part right now yeah I'm in that part and I create a point on a curve on a curve so for example this it doesn't matter where I just created a point which is right here you can see that okay good 
So all the way to the top, save everything. Okay, let's go and base, uh, fix the space. So anchor the base, which automatically, by the way, anchors this uh, ellipse in it. Now, uh, let me move these things apart so that we can do things properly. So up, okay, down, <laughs> say okay. So coincidence between this axis and that axis, already they are coincident. Coincidence or contact between this plane and kind of that bottom plane. Now remember, it doesn't matter bottom or top because you can flip the arrows and it puts in the right orientation. Good, good. Now let's put this uh, this pin inside of that hole. So coincidence between this pin, that coincidence between this plane. And that plane. Okay, and if it doesn't look good, we're going to flip the arrows. So, does it look good? Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, we go here. Flip. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to act coincidence between this axis and that axis. So, coincidence between the axis of the vertical coincidence between the axis of the vertical member and and coincidence of this side surface which is actually you know coaxial with that hole uh, but if you if it's bothering you just put the cursor here use the arrows to march through it there okay do it any way you want. This is going to make a cylindrical joint and it's going to be a problem. You'll see why. Because once I put this, this point on that curve, on that location, this can still spin and that is going to cause a problem. So I have to go and, go and take away that spinning motion, something that you're familiar with when we did the single cylinder engine, that pin inside of that was spinning but for now i will leave it the way it is because i want to show you that uh, it's going to cause a problem so uh, now let's put this point on that uh, on that location so coincidence between this point and that point update there we are now if we tried if we tried the if we tried the uh, manipulate the toolbar with this box check and for example rotate it about uh, this axis things are going to look good except that okay so we go to this manipulate toolbar make sure that uh, uh, make sure that uh, uh, this box is checked so that the constraints are respected so i'm going to do a, a rotation about this and i'm going to grab that link one and move it oh okay so here's his issue <laughs> the, the, the one problem is that because i made this thing because i made this thing uh coincidence like this i made it a coincidence with the two points uh, they're kind of stuck together okay yeah they're kind of stuck together and uh uh let me let me delete this. Let me delete this guy. Let me delete this guy because this makes a the two pieces stick together. And that means that this whole thing is never going to move. So we say, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. I brought it down, put it on the curve because later on, when I do want to do a point curve joint, uh, I need to have the point on the curve. So. Uh, let me go ahead to uh, Digital Mockup, DMU Kinematics, get the magic wand out, a new mechanism, auto create, say OK. So, what we're going to have is we're going to have a revolute here, a revolute here, a cylindrical there. OK? Revolute, revolute, cylindrical. So, let me do my point curve joint. Here's the point curve joint. First the curve, here's the curve, 
then the point now make sure you there are two points sitting on top of each other make sure you take the point for at the bottom of that uh, at the bottom of that uh, uh, what is that uh, link vertical link right vertical link the vertical link select this and you say okay now first of all notice that the number of degrees of freedom is two and the reason is two is that this cylindrical joint can spin about that axis. This should not be cylindrical. This should be actually a prismatic joint. Now, uh, let, let me remind you, you can either delete this, delete this mechanism, go and fix it, or delete that cylindrical one and fix it. And let me go. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing some extra work, I'm going to delete this mechanism. Okay, so let me go ahead, delete this. Don't delete the children. Okay, go here. Now, we, uh, what we need to do is to make sure a vertical axis, vert sorry, vertical plane, a vertical plane of this, this uh, vertical line, vertical link, keeps the same angle as a vertical plane of this link too. So how do we do that? We are, we go to assembly design, create an angle constraint, angle constraint between, for example, the, let's say the YZ plane of the vertical plane and the YZ plane of link two. Keep that angle the same, whatever it is. Right now it's 97 degrees, great. That will turn this thing into a prismatic joint later on. So let's go ahead, uh, let's go back, let's go back to digital markup. We close all of these. We go back to the digital markup, DMU kinematics. Oh, no, not fitting, DMU fitting. DMU kinematics, that's what I meant. Right there. Get the magic wand out. New mechanism. Mechanism one. Auto create. The only difference is that that cylindrical joint now becomes a prismatic joint. Let's check it. Prismatic joint. Right there. Okay. Now uh, let's do our point curve joint. So here's the point. Uh, this is a slight curve. This is a point curve. Curve one is that curve. Point is the point at the bottom of that vertical link. Now, if you're having a hard time picking it here because the things are sitting on top of each other, you go to vertical link. There's the point at the bottom of it. You say, okay, notice that the degree of freedom becomes one. Great. Now, we, we this point curve joint can be angle driven. Let's make it, uh, sorry, length driven, not angle driven, length driven. I say, okay, mechanism can be simulated. And uh, let's do that manually, first of all, make sure it's working. Yeah, okay. this is zero position. Okay, that was zero position. Let's create a simulation. All the way to the end, insert, rewind, and anything but one, and make it go continuously. And there we are. Now you can put the physics into it. For example, you can say, what is the velocity of this? You know how to do f of x. Okay, specify this uh, formula for this. And then you can plot the acceleration. You can plot uh, other things. Uh, remember, these two have these two uh, endpoints. These two vertices of the ellipse have the, the biggest acceleration for a constant speed. Okay, so that takes care of this. And uh, let me close that. Reset, say OK, save everything. And now we still have time. I can go to my very last problem, which is actually that guy. There's a cam follower problem. Basically, we have uh, two, uh, two parts, a base, a cam, and this uh, follower. OK, so uh, as the cam turns, the bottom of this uh, follower stays on that surface okay and then we can create a point curve joint now, i'm not going to bother making any dimensions so let's go ahead and jump into the thing
so uh, a product file immediately save it file save management save as one level up desktop new folder can follow follower okay so uh, let me go to assembly design let's make the wall first so uh, insert a new part in there i'm going to call this thing the wall right click properties wall and wall make it on a convenient plane on that vertical plane i use sketch something that looks like that wall so maybe a profile like this inverted l exit pad it okay that's fine on that top face i will sketch a circle where am i a circle Okay, exit, pocket, there we are, okay, good, so we go all the way, oh, oh yeah, on that side, back to here, I need a hole here where the cam is going to go, so on that face, I will sketch a circle, try it again, I'm trying to make it centered, although it's not necessary. Exit another pocket. Good. All the way to the top. Save everything. Insert. Insert a new part. Insert a new part in there. No. Call it the uh, ca uh, the cam, right? Properties, cam, and cam. Let's make it. Let's go there. On that plane, I will sketch. Why don't I project that circle? And let's do the rest of the cam. The rest of the cam, I'm going to draw it like this. And we'll clean it up. Okay, there's a lot of cleaning up here. <laughs> First of all, I want uh, this circle and that circle to be concentric. It just looks nicer. There we are. I want uh, uh, this and that to be tangent to each other. Again, it just looks nicer. Okay, same thing down here, this guy and this guy, tangent. Very good. And I think this is, I want to make it shorter, right there. So there's going to be my can. Exit. Do a multipad. So this is going to be the big boundary. So let's make that thing maybe one, see how it looks like. And this other one, I'm going to make it uh, a one and a half, or maybe two. That's going to be my pin. So all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Save everything. Let's do that pin. So insert a new part. I'm going to make it uh, very, okay, in, uh, a new part, yeah. I'm going to call it, I didn't mean the pin, I meant the follower. Right click properties, follower. And follower. Okay. Let's make it. 
on that face i will sketch let me fit it project that circle yeah project that circle <laughs> Oh, what, what did I do here? Uh, on that face, <laughs> I want to sketch, project a circle. Good. Uh, exit, pad it. Okay, and if you insist, you can have a little circle on the top. I don't insist, but <laughs> I want to have it. Yeah, it looks good. Exit, pad it, Ooh. point two. Yeah, that's good better okay i will also uh, create a i will also create a point at the bottom of this so i'm going to do a point center of that circle i say okay uh, this looks too ugly too too long let's make it less than that uh, maybe point uh, three yeah Whoa, what did I do? Oh, that was the, I know what happened. That was the multi, oh, let's undo this. Okay, that was a multi pad actually. Uh, no, no, it wasn't multi pad. It was uh, this guy, right? Yeah, this guy. Uh, point, not point three, maybe three. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's nicer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the problem. Now, in the book, I have extracted these four surfaces, these four faces. I don't think it's necessary, so I'll do it for you without extracting uh, those, those surfaces, okay? So let's go ahead and actually uh, fix the, the, the base. And then coincidence between this axis and that axis and coincidence between this plane and that plane update uh, except that the orientation those arrows must be flipped okay good good see it's coming from that other end good now let me move this thing around rotate this thing a little bit I want to bring this point and put it on that face. Also, so we say coincidence between this point and that face, update, bring it down. <laughs> the only thing is that this is not, uh, you know, long enough. So maybe this looks ugly. <laughs> where, where did I make uh, this thing was in multi-pad for, either I can move the I can move that hole this way to the left, or I can make this thing fatter. So let me make this thing fatter. That was the cam, right? It was the cam. Yeah, cam, multi pad, and it was this, right? So let me make it two. An overkill. <laughs> Go all the way to the top, update. Oh. Uh, okay, if I'm doing this thing too, the other guy must be bigger than two. What other guy? That other guy. So that should be maybe three. Okay. All the way to the top. Update. Yep. <laughs> okay, good, good. Oh, yeah, I have to make these uh, coincidence to coincidence. Now, here is the situation. This, if I make it coincidence, coincidence with that, this axis and that axis, that will give, 
that will lead into a cylindrical joint. And the problem is that with a cylindrical joint, that can rotate. So if I'm going to do that, I have to take that spinning motion away, just like the previous example, by making an angle constraint to turn it into prismatic joint. Let me do that. Coincidence between this line and that axis and angle constraint between a vertical plane of this, uh, what did I call this thing, this follower, vertical plane, for example, YZ, and vertical plane of the wall. That will turn, in, turn it into a prismatic joint and won't spin anymore. Hopefully this is still on that. I'm not sure if it's still, yeah, it is still on that. Okay, good. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. So uh, click on the move toolbar. Make sure that this box is checked. On the manipulate, let's rotate the cam about this axis. Let's see if it works. See that? Let me move it away. Ah, yeah, you see that? Now you might say, uh, wait a minute, what's going on? Uh, don't worry about it. It's, it is moving on that. We'll, we'll fix it later on. Okay, good. So now we're going to go to digital mockup. DMU kinematic, get the magic wand out, new mechanism, auto create, say okay. There will be one prismatic, one revolute, and who knows one more thing, maybe one more thing. One prismatic, one revolute. And now I wanna do a point surface join. So look here in these, you see right there, it says, Point surface. The surface is this, and the point is that. I'll say OK. And now the degree of freedom is one. And let's see if that revolute, we can make it angle driven. Zero to 360. OK, mechanism can be simulated. Now I'm hoping that this goes all the way around. If not, we may need to go and extract those faces. Eh, it's OK. That, that's good. That's good. It's good, yeah. Uh, so you don't really need those surfaces if you're careful and be very careful here. Let's do let's do a, a simulation a mechanism number one. Drag this thing all the way to the end. Insert, rewind, and change it to anything but one, and make it turn continuously. Let me move this thing down here so that you can see better. That's the way it's supposed to be, correct? And I did it without actually extracting the surfaces. Now you can put some physics into it, give the RPM of the the, uh, the cam, and then find out what the acceleration of the pin is, etc. This follower is, etc. And uh, that takes care of this problem.